think you're mapping out the brachial plexus. The axillary nerve, remember, it comes with the radial nerve from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, making it like this V. It branches out and comes under your armpit, right here, wraps around with the what? Let me remind you, the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Ah, wrapping around the surgical neck. So the nerve comes from under your armpit, which is called the axillary. So what nerve do you think is going to inhibit the deltoid? It's the axillary nerve. So easy, right? And now, let's think about the functions. Look about, right? Sorry to bother you about it. Okay. Um, the anterior deltoid is right here. It's starting from the, you know, part of your clavicle, a little piece of the coracoid process, and it's just attaching here. So when it contracts, it's basically crossing a joint. When it contracts, it should allow you to pull Bob's head forward. It's one of the primary flexors of the arm. When you get home, try this. Just, you know, flex your arm and touch this part of your body. It's going to be solid. The muscle is contracting. Now, what, what do you think is going to happen to the middle deltoid? It's going over here, so it's going to allow us what? Abduction. Now we have the posterior head, which is sitting right here, which is going to allow is what? Extension. After I go over this muscles, we're going to talk about primary flexors, primary extensors, primary abductors, and primary adductors. They're very easy. You don't have to really memorize them per se. If you sort of kind of know where the origin insertion, it gives it away. Uh, I've talked about the deltoid. Now, everybody have shoulder problem. My shoulder clicks like a bird. It does that all the time, you know. But I'm not going to talk about the, if you kind of notice, your shoulder, it's, a, it's like the most flexible part of your body. You can kind of do all this nice, beautiful motions, kind of like, you know how you guys know I've been doing, I'm doing my thing in a, a stone grip. But it's very flexible, right? It does a lot of things, so we need to stabilize it. So we have, this is the humerus, and this is the glenoid head, right? The glenoid part of the, 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 the uh, humerus, and this is, it's inserting the glenoid fossa. So think about it. This is your scapula, right? You have the spine, the medial border, the superior angle, the inferior angle, the lateral border of the scapula, right? The supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa. You have the acromion of the scapula, the suprascapula notch, which I really didn't talk about much, but then we have this little guy basically inserting right into this glenoid cavity. So basically it needs a lot of muscles to keep it stable. So we're going to talk about the six muscles. Let's talk about the first guy, supraspinatus. I kind of like that. I think it's hot, right? It sounds like sexy. Um, you have supraspinatus. It gives it away. It's above the spine of the scapula. It's sitting right here. Can you guys see it? right in the supraspinous fossa of the scapula. It's going to go under the subacromial bursa, over at the subacromial bursa, under the subacromial space, and wrap over to the greater tubercle of the humerus. Just quick review real quick. This is going to give it away. I'm going to tell you at the end, so you don't have to memorize this. Then it's called sits muscle that we all know. Infraspinatus mus muscle, originates right from this nice little dip called the super infraspinous fossa. It also inserts in the greater tubercle of the humerus. Now we have the teres minor, which is going to start from the lateral border of the scapula, all right, and inserts also at the greater tubercle of the humerus. All right, now let me give you the, the clue. Sit, right? We say it's sit muscle. Don't worry about the origin insertions. All the sit muscle, they're, in, they're basically all of them are uh, inserting to the greater tubercle of the humerus. So you don't have to worry because if three muscles inserting to the same spot, half of your problem is done. And supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa, and the lateral border. So one nerve innervates the supraspinators and the infraspinators. It's the suprascapular nerve. Remember the suprascapular nerve where it comes from the brachial plexus? You look that up. All right, now we have the teres minor. Now this is the clue for teres minor, and I like this. Remember I told you the axillary nerve is coming under the armpit, and your armpit is your axillary? And if the teres minor muscle is doing this, it's starting from your lateral border of the scapular, 
and inserting also to the greater tubercle, right, of the humerus, doing this. When the nerve passes next to you, what do you think is going to innervate? It's the axillary nerve. Very, very easy. All right? And we're going to talk about their functions in a minute. Um, then you have your teres major. Your teres major is going to start from the inferior angle of the scapular and go under and basically insert into the, uh, actually, uh, into the bicipital groove of the scap uh, of the humerus. Now, I should have talked about the other S, which is your subscapular muscle, because we are supposed to be talking about sets. I figure I should talk about most of the muscles in the back here. But right in this space, here under, this is the anterior part of the scapular. That's called the subscapular fossa. And that's where your subscapular muscle sits. And when he comes under, it's going to come attached into the, infi uh, in the, uh, the uh, inferior tubercle of the humerus. So think about it. Set st sits on the, gr the, um, the, gr the, the greater tubercle. Then the subscapular is the only muscle that attaches it to the, what? The, infer uh, the, the inferior uh, tubercle of the uh, humerus. And just to show you real quick, this is the greater tubercle. And this is the last tubercle of the humor. And in between here, because when we get to the, to the biceps, you will see what's going on, is the bicipital groove, or called the intertubercular groove of the humerus. And we'll talk about that in uh, more detail. Now, we need to go over the primary flexors and the extensors of the arm. Now, I like to be practical. You know, memorization is great, but if you don't see what the muscle is doing, you won't really appreciate it. So let's start with the primary uh, flexors of the arm. Now, this is Bob. He's going to try to flex his arm, right? And when he does this, his anterior deltoid is going to help him what? Flex. And there's another muscle which we haven't talked about, which is your coracobrachialis muscle. It starts from the coracoid process of the scapular, and it starts right about the you know, like middle third of the uh, humerus. Also helps you in flexion. Did we get that? Great. Now let's talk about the extensors, because I like to go agonist and antagonist. Now if we look at Bob, Bob needs to extend his arm, right? When Bob extends, you can tell that the posterior deltoid, remember what I told you? The posterior deltoid, innervated by what nerve? Axillary nerve, great. It's going to allow you to extend your arm backwards, but you know what? Remember the mnemonic MEAL, M-E-A-L, medial rotation, extension, and a deduction. So it helps you what? So the lat latissimus dorsal, which is innervated by what nerve again? The thoracodorsal nerve allows you to extend your arm. So those are your primary extensors, right? Now let's go over the a deduction and the a deduction of the arm. Now we need our body to our arm to basically allows an a deduction. Now your middle deltoid definitely is one of your primary a b abduct. I want you to abduct your arm, excuse me, and also what other muscle do you think is going to allow us to abduct? Um, the only muscle I can think of right now, let's see, um, is your, oh, you know, now let's look at our supraspinatus muscle. Remember I told you, so usually in anatomy, Abduction is kind of like uh, an angular uh, phenomenon. If a patient comes to the hospital and you tell them to pull out their arm, that's abduction, the first 15 degrees, right? That's your supraspinatus muscle. Now, in order for me to actually go up to 90 degrees, I need this a stronger muscle, because the supraspinatus is this small muscle, remember? I need a bigger muscle to allow me to go about 90 degrees. That's my middle deltoid. Now, I haven't talked about one extra muscle, which allows us to rotate our scapula. Guess who it is? It's the serratus anterior muscle. And um, let me show you exactly what serratus anterior muscle is, just real quick. Um, serratus anterior muscle is going to be attaching to the medial aspect, uh, originated from the medial aspect of your uh, scapula. And it's going to go all over and attach to ribs 5, 6, 7, and 8. Remember that. Serratus anterior ribs 5, 6, 7, and 8. And you know what that do, does? It stabilizes the scapula. It pulls it down, right? And also, 
Look at Bob. When Bob tries to AB duct, it looks like he's stuck, right? The only way this scapula can move laterally